Hello, hello, and welcome back. I'm so excited that you have joined me for this episode for this conversation. So <clears throat> interestingly enough, the topic for today came out of several different conversations, conversations with my team in both businesses, actually conversations with friends, with family, even with my own mentor. Um, and it's funny how you know, when you really get into something, it doesn't really matter what it is, but perhaps you come into a new body of knowledge or you come into a new area of study. Maybe you find your favorite new TV show series. If you're anything like me, I go like all the way in with it. I go sort of head first. If I like something, it's like there's no gray area with it. I am 110% swimming in the waters of this new thing. And that's exactly what happened for me with human design. And I remember this is also exactly what happened for me when I was a brand new therapist, you know, decades ago. It, it had this same sort of energy for me where I had I realize I'm just jumping right in today. So let's, we're just going to jump in. We're just going to go there. Um, no small talk today. So I had this sort of insatiable desire to want to learn more, to train more, to read more, to practice more. I, I, you know, I signed up for all the courses, all the trainings, you know, even after I graduated from my doctoral degree as a therapist, I was, I probably did. I always, my husband always joked. He was like, I thought the bulk of your education was done. I thought you were done spending money on education, but I actually, in some ways, I, I think I might've even spent like even more money, um, on training and, and workshops and, um, mentorship and supervision and all of those things after I graduated from formal education, just on deepening my skills. <clears throat> and this, trend continues, my friends, it is continuing with human design. And so when I came across the human design system, I totally went head and heart first is probably the best way to put it. I went head, head, heart, and soul first, really. Let's, let's be honest. I went all in with it. Um, I've got tons of books now on human design, um, doing the certifications, all, all the things, all the things. And of course I'm teaching on it. We've brought it into the EQ code and we're getting incredible results. The women inside of my different communities are really enjoying how expansive human design has become for them in their quest to really have the life, the business, the relationships that they truly desire. But what was highlighted for me in these different conversations with family, with friends, with team members, and even with my own mentor is Shamala, you know, most people still don't understand what human design is. And if you're going to go sort of head, heart, and soul first into this area, it might be helpful for your audience to have a context and a basic understanding of hu what human design is. So this is perhaps an episode that I could have put out several weeks or several months ago, but better late than never. Um, so if you are part of my community and you are new ish to human design, maybe you've, maybe you've never heard about human design. You've never heard this term before until I started talking about it. And you're like, what the heck is Shamala talking about? You know, what does this have to do with emotional intelligence? What is this crazy woman doing? Maybe you've had some of those thoughts, or maybe you know something about human design and you can begin already to see the connection between human design and emotional intelligence, or you can begin to see the connection between energetics and emotions. Or maybe you're like some of the women that are inside of my community and you work with human design. Some of the women that I work with inside of my coaching programs are human design certified, or they are already using human design, not just in their own life, but they're also using it as part of the services that they offer inside of their business. So regardless of where you are at in your own journey of understanding what I believe is a life-changing tool. I thought the conversation that we could have today 
um, would simply be for me to share with you what human design is from my perspective. And you'll probably hear lots of, there's lots of different ways, I think, to <clears throat> explain and to understand any uh, body of knowledge. So what I'm going to be sharing with you today is my understanding of the question and the answer, what is human design? That's the conversation I'd love for us to have today. So for me, you know, human design, the way I like to look at it is that it is simply a system. It's simply a system, but I believe it's a very, very powerful system for a number of different reasons. And I'm going to share those reasons with you today. So we can look at human design as a system that provides us with unbiased and I would say unfiltered data about who we are and how we are uniquely designed or wired to operate in the world. So let me tell you, uh, let me tell you why I say unbiased and unfiltered. So within the field of personal development, personal growth, coaching, even within the field of therapy, um, you've probably come across a number of different uh, personality tests. Maybe you've worked with psychometric testing like the Myers-Briggs or the Enneagram um, or the strong interest inventory. I mean, I'm not even familiar with what the latest uh, personality tests are now. But I know when I was coming up through my training as a psychotherapist, I had many colleagues who were therapists who offered some level of personality testing, career testing, psychometric testing uh, as part of their practice. And while I've taken many of these tests myself, and while I have had clients, of course, work with many of these types of assessments and these types of tests, I uh, never chose to include this type of testing into my practice. And I also never chose to include it in, into my practice as a psychotherapist, but I also never chose to include it in my practice as a coach. And the reason being is... <clears throat> for me, um, one of the biggest areas that I work with women on is in identifying and clearing their blocks. So those could be emotional blocks. They, those could be mindset blocks. They could be energetic blocks. They could be relational blocks. But my view of what gets us stuck as human beings is these blocks. It's these blocks that have been patterned, that have perhaps been passed down, that have been ingrained into our subconscious mind. It's our blocks that actually get us stuck. And again, my paradigm for change is that once we are able to clearly identify what our blocks are, then we can clear them and then we can expand to our fullest expression in life, in business, in relationships. So the reason I, <clears throat> I never chose to utilize one of these personality assessments in any of my practices is because um, for me, what always got me sort of um, stuck, I guess, with these is that these personality tests and the personality assessments that exist uh, are um, like they are self-rated, meaning the individual. So let's say I was to take the Myers-Briggs test, for example, it's probably one of the most uh, commonly um, recognized personality tests. If I take the Myers-Briggs tests, I am rating myself on a bunch of different scales and my rating or my view of myself. And we know this clinically is my view of myself is always going to be influenced by my history. It's always going to be influenced by my beliefs. It's always going to be influenced by my current state of mind. Always. We can't get away from that. That's just part of the human condition. So unless I have done some really profound work and cleared these blocks, I've got complete clarity. I'm sort of untethered from old patterns, old paradigms, 
old narratives, unless I'm one of these, you know, superhumans that's done all of this work, then the results of this type of assessment would always be skewed by my view of self. And our view of self is often not very clear. We don't have a clear view of self because it's so influenced by all of these old patterns, all of these old programs. So that's why I never chose to use one of these types of tests in my practice. What's so different about the human design system and I'll tell you in a moment where you can, you know, take the, like, it's not a test, but where you can run your human design chart and begin your exploration of the human design system. What's so different about this is you can think of it almost like the ultimate personality test. I don't even like to use that word because it's, in my opinion, so much more accurate than a personality test, but it's, it's almost like the ultimate personality test, but it provides us with the most accurate data on who we are, how to make our life easier and how to make our life the most impactful it can be. That's, that's why I love the human design system so much. And that's why I love working with a person's human design chart. I have benefited greatly from understanding my own human design chart, understanding my daughter's human design chart, understanding my partner's human design chart. I've even had team members share their human design chart with me. And now inside of our programs, we have clients share their human design chart with me so I can have a really, really clear understanding emotionally, energetically, um, in terms of conditioning where they are blocked, where my clients are blocked. And then together we can create this really, um, excuse me, we can create this really clear roadmap for how to get them unblocked and actually achieve their goals, actually achieve the results that they desire. So <clears throat> for me, human design is a system that provides us with unparalleled clarity around how we are each uniquely designed to move through life, to move through our relationships, and even to grow our business with the highest level of efficiency and ease. This is for me what is so beautiful about the human design system is it provides us with a level of clarity that I truly believe is unmatched. It is unmatched. Like I have, you know, been in the industry for now over two decades uh, and I have yet to find a system that can give me the level of clarity that a person's human design chart can provide me with. Now, the caveat to this is that the human design chart will provide us with like, it's like, uh, that's why I use the word unfiltered. Like there's no filter, no human filter, no paradigm filter, no pattern, no programming, nothing on the actual human design chart. So when I look at your human design chart, I can see who you are and how you have been designed to move through the world in the most efficient and the most effortless way possible. That's the beauty of me reading your human design chart. What happens though, and what's really important to understand when you are working with your human design chart and when you're working with a practitioner that uses human design is what happens in our human experience, though our lived experience is we are all deeply prone to what is called conditioning conditioning. So conditioning is a term that's used in human design. Conditioning, of course, is a term that is used in clinical practice as well. And what conditioning simply means is we are all prone to being impacted, influenced, and um, shifted basically by our family of origin, by our early relationships, by paradigms that we grew up with, by experiences that we've had growing up. So this is all the stuff around like limiting beliefs. This is all the stuff around what's happening inside of our subconscious mind. This is all the stuff around our attachment style. All of those pieces come in and influence our 
human design. So this is where it gets layered, right? This is where it gets a little bit tricky, a little bit murky. Um, and this is where the work of alignment, that's a term that you'll hear a lot within human design, the work of aligning with your human design um, can be complex. So it is important that you work with a practitioner that can really understand the conditioning, that can really understand the patterns, that understands how to read your human design chart in such a way that they are able to see who you're designed to be at your highest expression, at your highest frequency, at your most effortless and most efficient way of moving through life. And reading that in, in tandem with how you've been conditioned. So perhaps where are you uh, experiencing low expressions of your, of your human design chart? Perhaps where has family of origin conditioned you to show up in a particular way? Where are you perhaps feeling blocked energetically? Okay. So if you are brand new to human design, a great place to start is to simply identify which of the five energy types you fall into. The five energy types are manifestors, generators, manifesting generators, projectors, and reflectors. So that's the best place to start. And there are tons of free sites where you can find this information out. I have not designed any of these sites. Um, the one that we use with our clients inside of the EQ code is called is mybodygraph.com. So www.mybodygraph.com. We will make sure to link that up in the show notes for you, but that is the best place. Uh, I'm not going to say it's the best place. It's the one that we use. Um, we also use their software when we work with clients so we can get more detailed, a more detailed analysis of a client's human design chart. So once you find out what your human design type is, come back, let me know, reach out to me on Instagram, um, reach out to me on Facebook, come and find me on the internet and let me know um, what your human design chart is, what your human design type is. Now, if you are interested in going deeper, so maybe you've pulled your human design chart, maybe you know what your human design type is, maybe you've got some information about human design, or maybe you've worked with your own human design in some capacity. However, you still feel a little intimidated by this particular system, or you're not quite sure how to fully understand how to take what you can see in your human design chart and how to translate that into a practical tool for you to operate with the highest efficiency for you to move through life in a way that truly feels effortless for you to manage your relationships differently. Maybe you're a business owner, you're a service provider, and you desire to grow your business and you understand that human design can provide us with um, incredible insight about how you are best designed to um, use sales and to use marketing and what kind of programs you should be running. Maybe you want to go deeper with some of those pieces, but you're not sure where to start. If this is you, if you desire to learn more about your human design chart, but not just learn more about it, you actually want to be able to leverage your human design chart and you actually want to be able to master your emotional intelligence along with it in order to improve your quality of life. Maybe you want to be able to grow your business or maybe you want to be able to parent better or you want to have a um, a better relationship with your partner or with your team, I want to invite you to explore a brand new program that I have coming out that starts at the end of September. So the program is called The Nine. And the reason this program is called The Nine is because within our human design chart, we have nine energy centers. And the best way to really leverage human design so that we can have the life, the business, the relationships that we really desire, the 
best way to utilize human design is to actually understand how to show up in the highest frequency of these nine energy centers. Okay. So the nine energy centers are the, in my opinion, the most powerful aspect of your human design chart. There are many, many, many layers within human design, but the place that I like to start with my clients in helping them really leverage human design in their own life are their energy centers. Why? Because People are constantly reading our aura. So in our personal lives, in our professional lives, people are always, always, always reading our aura, our energetic aura. In fact, before we even open our mouth, before we even say anything, before we speak, before we, you know, interact with anyone in a tangible way, what people are actually picking up on and what people are actually reading is our aura. So this is absolutely true of our personal relationships, and it is absolutely true of our professional relationships. So if you want to improve, if you want to up-level in your life, if you want to improve your relationships, or if you want to grow your business, I believe the place to start is to really um, shift your energetic aura by learning how to tap into the highest expression of every single one of your nine energy centers. And here's the thing. Every single one of us has a unique expression of those nine energy centers. Okay. So when you look at your human design chart, some of those energy centers will be colored in those are your defined centers. Some of them will be white. Those are your undefined centers. So there is a different way energetically we um, need to be working with our defined centers versus our undefined centers. So inside of the nine, I am going to walk you through every single energy center. I'm going to help you to understand what each energy center looks like at its highest expression or at its highest frequency. And I'm also going to help you to understand what it looks like at its lowest expression or its lowest frequency. Once you can understand this for every single energy center, then you can truly optimize, you can master your energetic blueprint so that you're able to uh, leverage your human design chart so that you're able to move through life in the most efficient and the most effortless way possible. This is how human design has truly changed. Like it's changed my approach to life. It's changed my, it's changed my approach to parenting. It's changed my approach to communication with my partner. It's changed how I sell, how I market, how I create, and how I deliver programs inside of my business. It's changed my leadership style with my team. It's changed how I create my schedule. It has liter literally infiltrated every single part of my life in the best way possible, in the best way possible. My efficiency is through the roof. I have so much more time and space in my schedule. When I create and deliver programs, I do them with so much joy and so much um, excitement and so much alignment with my mission. So if you are feeling stuck emotionally, if you are feeling stuck energetically, if you feel like you don't quite know who you are and how you are designed to move through the world, you will absolutely love the nine. It is a 30 day intensive program. There are three different ways that you can access this program at three different price points all with payment plans. So I'm not going to get into all the details here because this episode we would become way too long. But what I will tell you is if you head to my website, the eqcode.com, right on the website, you will be able, you'll see, it's going to be very clear. You will see a button that says explore the nine. You can go in there. You can explore the nine there. We're also going to link it up in the show notes here. 
Or if you connect with me on Instagram, head over to at the EQ code on Instagram. If you go to the link in my bio, you will see a button that says the nine, just click on that. And it will tell you all about this program. It is fabulous. The content inside of this program is absolutely incredible. It will help you understand the foundations of the nine energy centers within your human design chart, the transformation that you will experience in 30 days in, uh, with me inside of this powerful container is going to be like nothing you have experienced before. It will be unlike any program. It is like, I can't even compare it to a business program because it's, it's nothing like any business program you have ever taken. The shift is going to be deep. It's going to be internal. And it's something that will literally transform your approach to life, your approach to your relationships. And if you're a business owner, it will transform your approach to your business. So I'd love for you to, I'd love to invite you to, to have a look, explore what the nine is all about. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out and let me know. I'll see you guys again next time.